Uh, hello, um, my name is Seth Delisle. I'm, uh, I work down the street at uh, JAMA Software, if anyone knows of that place. I, uh, I do some DevOps stuff, but uh, and I've dabbled with, uh, with Ruby, um, a little more in the Python realm and uh, some Clojure script. I, actually, uh, the thing I'm gonna give a very brief talk about right now is, uh, uh, is implemented in a framework that's actually very similar to, uh, to uh, what Elm the framework that Elm comes with. So it was kind of cool to, to see that. Thanks a lot for that talk. Um, but I'm here to talk about Unmoney. Um, Unmoney is uh, working on a radical new way of uh, funding community projects and maybe use some air quotes with funding there, but funding community projects and uh, putting buying power in the, in the hands of the people who need it. Um, so probably most people in the room know about um, like uh, Bitcoin, it's lost a little bit of its luster lately, but, um, but you might know that uh, Bitcoin has this concept of a proof of work. And, um, and you know, and there's a lot of other interesting things about, uh, about Bitcoin. I think if you were, you know, 15 years ago, you'd be pretty surprised to find out that, that uh, people would take real US dollars and trade it for Bitcoin and, and vice versa. So I feel like it, it's taught us a little bit about what the nature of money is or that there might be some new possibilities there. Um, so, but, but that aspect of the proof of work is, is pretty interesting. You know, um, you, you burn some electricity on your computer and it, and it creates a, a Bitcoin. So unmoney is based on the concept of, well, okay, that burning electricity to, to create money is, is kind of wasteful. Uh, wouldn't it be cool if, um, if we could do something useful as that proof of work? Specifically, what if the proof of work was proof of work for the common good? So um, in, in Unmoney, if you, uh, if you do one hour of work for the common good, I'll get some more details there, uh, you get 10 Jiffies, Jiffies being this, this uh, currency, currently worth approximately zero dollars. I think I'll get more into, the, into that in a moment. Um, yeah, so, uh, so again, if, if, you, if you do something that, that the unmoney community acknowledges as uh, work for the common good, you get 10 jiffies. Um, it also has some other pro uh, properties that I wanna tell you about right away. Um, uh, it has this property of being a, um, if I'm what's called demurrage, where um, if you're holding jiffies, uh, they shrink. So if you have 10 jiffies today and you don't spend any or uh, earn any, at the end of the month, you'll have nine jiffies instead. Uh, so the idea there is um, uh, to kind of prevent hoarding, or you could look at it in a more positive way, like to uh, increase the velocity of, of, of uh, currency make more, encourage people to make more transactions so that the, so that the uh, currency can be useful as a, as a, um, as a, as a uh, medium of exchange. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I went past that point about the common good. Obviously it's pretty critical to be able to determine what the common good is. And this is something that human beings are pretty famous for having some disagreements about. Um, so, you know, the best, that we can do there is to have a very horizontal democratic decision-making process and um, and we've got lots of ideas about how to do that and but you know it's really about making a good community and um, and using the best tools that we got so some of those tools you know um, uh, consensus is one that people know a lot about sortition is one that people maybe haven't used as much but it's the idea of using randomly uh, randomly selected people to hold um, you know, sort of executive positions or, or, you know, positions that have some kind of responsible, some task that they're responsible for that could kind of accumulate power if you weren't careful or that could be um, abused. And then um, another technique from the sort of free software open source world is uh, the fork. Um, if, uh, or, you know, from other communities, the term might be more of like free association that as long as, as long as you're kind of not forced to participate or as long as your investment, you can kind of go away with it, um, then uh, that really helps uh, avoid sort of uh, like capture by an by a unscrupulous actor. Uh, so 
very critical thing with something like uh, like a currency is you, you want to have some value. And um, like I said, uh, this is very early days for unmoney, so um, there, the value of the Jiffy is not not really a big player at this moment. Um, uh, but uh, but so we have to figure out how to make sure that it does have value, and um, and the answer to that is just supply and demand. Um, and my, if if you think of unmoney in the position of deciding what is the common good, uh, clearly we can get to the point where we could prioritize what is the common good, and um, and then on the flip side of that, we could we can actively put work into uh, creating value. So. Uh, so uh, just in the simple, as a simple example uh, by itself, I don't think it's enough, but imagine a bake sale. And in fact, we do have a bake sale running um, that if, if, um, if somebody's willing to um, bake, you know, some brownies and you know that you can buy a brownie for, for uh, a Jiffy, then now the, the, G the Jiffy has value, as long as a brownie has value to you. Uh, the Jiffy has value to you, and of course, if somebody, if you know somebody who who wants a brownie, uh, again, uh, you might be able to trade a Jiffy for something that they have that um, that you want. Um, so um, the reason I wanted to talk in front of this group is because um, because I, the Ruby community is a, is very well known for for being a very excellent community. And, um, and there's lots of great open source and free software stuff going on in the Ruby community. Um, I'll get back to that in a second, but um, uh, to try and build on money, um, we're looking at kind of having two phases where the first phase is, um, is to try and to kind of work with friendlier, you know, people who are friendlier to the concept. Um, you know, obviously start like, this process of bootstrapping is very difficult. So, it's not going to be much useful, much use for people to hold jiffies unless there's something you can do with them. Um, so, um, uh, so anyway, uh, we'll start out by focusing on getting more jiffies out there so that there's more people who could potentially interact, you know, buy something that you're offering or whatever. Um, and during that time, we'll we'll focus less on the value of the jiffy and more on on trying to get it out. And so. Uh, Talk some more about that in a second, um, and then the second phase, and then there would be a later phase where, uh, and and the folks who are involved in Omni at this point are really more uh, are most focused on like the really big societal problems. You know, there's a bunch of homeless people out there who who don't have a warm place to sleep tonight, and it's really cold. Um, you know, a lot of people in Oregon are hungry, so those might be the the things that are sort of like top of our mind. Um, but we can't really, like, I, I'm not going to go up to somebody who's homeless and say, hey, you know, um, I'm working on this crazy project. You know, they, they got bigger concerns. So, so um, that's another reason to, like, kind of, uh, that we're kind of rolling it out in, a, in an environment, you know, among people who, you know, are not, not trying, struggling to survive, people who have some free time, maybe. And, um, and so we're looking at, um, in particular, looking for people who are already kind of volunteering their time as, um, uh, people who can accept Jiffies for their work so that you're not like losing something really uh, by accept, accepting or participating. Uh, but we are hoping to keep the, the value of the, uh, or trying to have some value in the Jiffy so it can be at least interesting to like play with. Um, yeah, and, but to, to be clear, I mean, it would be really nice if we can get to the point where um, the value of Jiffy, say if a Jiffy was worth a buck 50 and you can make 10 of them an hour, um, we're kind of in the, in the territory of, of a living wage so that we could, we, like, that would be the you know, ideal. Um, so specifically in this context, um, I wanted to talk about, uh, you know, like is there a possibility here for a radical reimagining of how to uh, fund free software? And uh, in the context of unmoney, and so um, I wanted to think through that with you a little bit. Uh, so the one thing that's pretty clear is, you know, people people making libraries to help us do our work, like that, like that's clearly people are already doing work for the common good in free software. I think that's that's really clear. So in that sense, it's a good fit. Um, I went to Strange Loop in 2017, and um, and there were a number of talks about. Um, about how to fund free software, you know, uh, the 
I, I think some of these kind of scandalous events that happened with JavaScript had happened, you know, in that previous year where people were realizing, wow, like there's so many people who are just like, there's like all these projects that we depend on that where there's just one maintainer and then you go and look at the, the maintainer is really miserable, just like answering email all the time. Um, so a couple of people talked, I don't know, probably some people in this room know Nadia Eggball. Uh, she talks a lot about, uh, you know, trying to like find new models for funding uh, free software, open source software. And then uh, Matt Mitchell is probably a little less known. He was a really great speaker. Um, he does some like crypto stuff in Harlem. Um, and uh, and uh, he was talking a lot about, okay, you know, going out and like, how do you, how do you find these alternative source of, uh, of, uh, of uh, funding for, for open source? Um, both of them, I, I felt like they were sort of disappointing in their, in their results. They basically came down to philanthropists, like the Ford Foundation came up in both of their talks, um, and, and then like government institutions. Um, I think um, with uh, Nadia uh, Eggball, she's thinking more along the lines of, you know, like maybe we can, maybe we can come up with new ways of convincing the government to put money into, into open source software, that kind of thing. Um, so I just wanted to point out that, like, uh, if you look at at philanthropists, um, the Ford Foundation, uh, you know, that like, yeah, they're philanthropy, but they've they've kind of got they've got ulterior motives. They they want to get something for for um, what they're funding. Um, you know, not that it's totally off, uh, like not going to happen, but you can see that they ha they don't fund a lot, and when they do fund, it's like little tiny uh, chunks of money. Um, you know, uh, again, on that subject that um, uh, in Mad Men, there's a, there's a, uh, a line where the guy says, uh, you know, uh, philanthropy is a gateway to power. So, um, yeah, just that there's ulterior motives. And then if you look at how, uh, like, um, how uh, Tor is funded, you again get that same perspective. Uh, Tor is really funded by, and this is a classic example of a, of a free software project that's that's funded but with government uh, money they're they're funded by the navy the statement part the, the state department and the broadcast board of governors Bo broadcast board of governors is a is a cia spin-off that like ran the uh, voice of america in asia or radio free asia or something like that and and does a lot of kind of spooky stuff um, again they've they've got a they've got a goal and it's not to make your life easier when you're programming so anyway um, i'll try to wrap this up uh, let's presuppose that the Jiffy was worth a buck fifty. Like, what would, what would uh, that, what could that mean for for open source and free software? Well, one interesting thing is like, who would code? Like, okay, let's say you had a, let's imagine that it was a basically infinite supply of of funding for paying people fifteen dollars an hour to work on on free software projects. Um, probably not a lot of people in this room would take that option. Um, but I can say, even from my own experience, like there was a point in my life where I was like, I would really like to be programming free software. Like, what can I do to give myself the time to do that? Oh, like you know, I can, I can, you know, cut my costs down to nothing, live in a hovel, and um, and it's like it still didn't quite work out for me. I, like I couldn't quite get those costs down, and I ended up like taking a job, and and then now I'm in the gilded cage. I don't have the time to do that. Um, uh, but okay, so there's that. Uh, I, I, I think that's just a really interesting question. I'll just leave it as an open question. Um, but um, so another another element here is if if the decisions of prioritizations of what um, uh, what open source work to do was coming from um, from a sort of very democratic horizontal process, you know what would those priorities be versus the ones that we we currently have right now, right now? You know. Um, you know, Google, Mozilla, like these, they're, that, that money, or, you know, New Relic is probably find, funding some uh, free software. I don't know for sure, but I, I would bet. And, um, you know, but those are like, they're, they're, they're working on the stuff that, that helps them build the stuff that they're building. Um, there might be some possibilities for stuff that, like, sort of solves some problems for some people who, who aren't really represented in that decision-making process, and uh, you know, just the political process itself of, of um, you know, this would be a lot like, um, oh, uh, 
what do they call it, participatory budgeting. Some people are really excited with municipal governments and stuff like that. Um, okay, so hopefully I didn't go too much over. I wasn't really keeping track of time during this, but um, uh, that that describes it and, and the, describes on money and um, and uh, and why uh, I wanted to talk to you about it. Uh, the, I mean, but more specifically, I, I, I would like to ask for help. And the number one thing that I'm interested in is uh, trying to trying to find people who are who are doing something for the common good. I would imagine that people in this room are probably connected to people who are doing free software projects, open source software projects, and I'd and I'd love to, you know, if they're kind of on the on the more experimental, creative end, they might be interested in something like this, and. Um, so that's my that's my biggest interest. I'm also we also have a a, a small um, we just have a Slack channel where we're we're trading goods. So so far we've got a jar of Jiffy peanut butter has been traded for Jiffy's an electric guitar for twenty Jiffy's. I think that was a pretty good deal. Um, some board games. So you know it has it has been used, and um, yeah. And and finally, any questions that you have, I would really appreciate. I, I should clarify here um, uh, the unmoney. There's a web app and that sort of thing. Oh, so first of all, the the question was uh, if if we're doing something like Bitcoin with proof of work and everything, uh, and not wasting electricity, uh, what what is the um, what is the compute power being used for? Uh, just to clarify, um, Bitcoin technology is super cool. Uh, Unmoney technology is super uncool. It's just it's just a web app, uh, with a with a database behind it. So it's it's centralized. I mean, it would be interesting to make it decentralized, but that's that's not the priority okay. right You're now. Not doing this in kind of like no, 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 no. I mean, to be specific, like I think that it, uh, like say putting it on a a, a like say uh, I, I wouldn't want Ethereum because then we'd be building uh, burning electricity again, but. Um, but you could potentially put it on um, the Tezos network is using proof of stake instead of proof of work, and so it doesn't waste electricity. But it's pretty young. Any other questions? Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate your time. <laughs>